When I tell people I meet that I spent 13 years of my life as a Girl Scout, the first thing they always ask about is the cookies. This often leads to a 20, 30 minute discussion about which cookie is best and why. And while I do agree the cookies are delicious, I'm often frustrated by the idea that the most outward sign of Girl Scouts to others is just cookies. When in reality, it's so much more. But what's also funny is that at least for me, I owe much of the success in my adult life, not just to Girl Scouts as a whole, but to cookie sales specifically. Girl Scouts taught me how to canoe, how to change the oil in a car, how to shoot a bow and arrow. But most importantly, it taught me how to shape my future. What Girl Scouts does best is not by teaching people how to survive in the wilderness, but by emphasizing the importance of experience and how that relates to your future. And nothing does this better than cookie sales. So how does Girl Scouts highlight the importance of personal growth in a way that girls from age five all the way to 18 and even adults can understand? Um, they emphasize three important pillars. Number one, courage. Number two, confidence. And number three, character. And while each of these is important on their own, in, in order to be the best version of yourself, it's important to utilize all of these together as a group. In life and in cookie sales, there are going to be times that require action and decision making and will just challenge you as a person. But this is where personal growth happens, because growth is formed from being uncomfortable. So when you're deciding where to start on your journey, and where to end, looking at character is a great first step. Who are you? Who do you want to be? What makes you different? And what are your passions? These all stem from the idea of character. All three female Secretary of States in US history were at one time Girl Scouts. These women, Hillary Clinton, Madeleine Albright, Condoleezza Rice, did not become some of the most powerful politicians in US history of any gender by simply following the footsteps of others. These women are confident in themselves, but most importantly, they are firm in their beliefs and they know who they are. Their character drives all of their steps, and you can see that in every motion they make. They're not afraid to speak their mind, disagree, stand up for themselves and others, and this is where their character sh shines no matter what they're doing. So for everyone else, when trying to figure out where you want to go on your journey, looking backwards is a great first step. Just like in a maze, you can work your way backwards rather than working your way forwards. Although your journey might change as you develop different goals or find setbacks or things like that, it's never a bad idea to start at the end. A few years ago, um, I was at a standstill in my career. I'd worked in a lab for three years, um, but I realized I wanted to do something more, and I didn't want to go to professional school. So I thought, what should I do next? I'd spent most of my adult life adamantly avoiding trying to go to business school because my parents are both CPAs, and I did not want to follow in their footsteps. But at the end of the day, I looked at my strengths, I looked at my passions, I looked at my goals and figured out what I want to do and realized that business school was the next step despite the one that I had been dreading. Um, at the same time, I also realized that although I was kind of following the journey of my family, it was drastically different than theirs because my beginning was different and my end was distinct. I knew what I wanted to do and it wasn't the same. Character is dependent on who you are as a person, your core beliefs, and that makes you you. And so even though you might have a similar path or you might have similar morals to someone else, you're always gonna be a distinct person and characters derive from that. All right, next, courage. There's a reason that almost every female astronaut in NASA history was at one time a Girl Scout, courage. I'm not saying that everyone with courage will find their way into outer space, but the desire to explore the unknown is useless without the courage to take risks. These women demonstrate confidence and character as well, um, and they also have all the great characteristics that make an astronaut. But at the end of the day, courage is the extra push that helped launch them into orbit. What's so interesting about courage is that it's distinct between two people, but also distinct in the same person depending on the situation. It also does a good job of connecting your character to your confidence, as this is where all your growth is derived from. Um, some of the ways I've demonstrated courage in the last few weeks is um, I applied for a job very different than the one I have, I adopted a dog, I emailed my boss a PTO request, I sold $7,000 worth of chicken for the Houston Rodeo, um, and I went to the gym. That's the thing with courage, is it's just about taking risks, whether it's something small that you've done 100 times that you just simply hate doing, or showing up to an event you know you won't know anyone there, but you know it's important for you. Courage makes you step out of your comfort zone and take these risks, and continues to help you build your character. All right, lastly, confidence. 
at this point, you may be thinking, what is the difference between confidence and courage? Why do you need both of them? I read a quote once that said, um, courage is thriving under uncertainty, while confidence is the assessment afterwards. Having all the courage in the world means nothing if you don't know how to use it to your advantage. So for me personally, um, I, my confidence comes from the ability to not only say yes to things that are important, but to say no. So first of all, obviously, I started at Girl Scouts, um, and then I made my way to selling chickens. But confidence is also knowing that sometimes there's the right way to say no. Um, a few weeks ago, I was talking to a buyer after successfully selling some chickens. Um, I had talked to them, and they were very impressed by my sales abilities. Thank you from the cookies. Um, but they offered me a job selling concrete, gave me their business card, and told me to follow up. And it's this moment I realized that I hate sales. It's not for me. It's not my personality. And that's where my personal confidence came into play. I might be good at something, and, but I can say no to that, even if I may thrive, because I know there's something better out there for me. And that's my big personal step of confidence, knowing who I am, what I want to do, and picking things that meet that goal. On the other hand, a couple months ago, a reporter for the Wall Street Journal reached out to me on Twitter and asked me to interview for an article about Biscoff cookies. Yes, more cookies. Um, I sat there, and my character came through because they said, you will regret this decision if you don't. So I did. I did the interview. It ended up being on the front page of the newspaper the day it ran. And so now I can say that I was published on the front page of the Wall Street Journal for something as minuscule as cookies. But if I had not had the confidence, listened to my character, and had the courage to take that risk, I would never have that opportunity. All right, so we're going back to the cookies. How did selling boxes of Girl Scout cookies outside of a grocery store for $3.75 teach me anything other than how to add and subtract with quarters? First of all, it taught me a lot about my character and who I am. I like to set high lofty goals. So one year, I made it a goal to sell 1,000 boxes of Girl Scout cookies, and the next year, I had the number two sales in the entire Council of Houston. Um, I also learned that sometimes you'll fail. I didn't become number one. I lost by 40 boxes. But I learned that I can learn from my mistakes, and I can step back and analyze them as a whole, rather than just dwelling on the things that happened. This is what shapes my character and everything I do. Um, so next, courage. Um, do you know how many times you get told no when you sell Girl Scout cookies? It's a lot. <laughs> um, but what I also learned from this experience is that the worst thing someone can say is no, so why not just continue to try? Um, that's the thing about courage, is it's, awkward. it's often uncomfortable or awkward or just embarrassing standing there in a giant thin mint costume outside a grocery store. It's how I spent my spring break in middle school. Um, but it can lead to even greater things, like giving a TEDx talk or even just, I don't know, ordering from the Starbucks barista rather than just using the mobile app. So every step you take leads to your courage and leads to your personal growth. Because if personal growth comes from being uncomfortable, courage is the instigator of this. Uh, lastly, confidence. I think what's important to note about confidence is that no one is ever truly confident. I like to think that Taylor Swift might be, um, but I think she probably gets nervous and has to shake it off or whatever. Um, but at the end of the day, confidence makes things easier. The more you grow and challenge yourself and the more you put yourselves in these courageous opportunities that lead to growth, the more confident you become, the more you learn about your character and help shape you and you as a person. All right. So, while Girl Scouts has taken me around the world, it's taught me to sail, I learned to scuba dive, I even got to raise a guide dog. The most important thing I learned from my time during Girl Scouts is personal growth, not just then, but continuing to my adult life. By utilizing the three pillars of courage, confidence, character, and everything I do and all the decisions I make, I often find myself in some of the most insane and uncomfortable situations, but the growth that comes afterward is incredible. <laughs>